Welcome to Radio Free East Tennessee podcast number 78 for October 2024. How's the show license? The logo and jingles are copyright 2018 to 2024 by Christopher L. Augustus, all rights reserved. The sound recordings license are under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International License. All content is either generated by me or for me or available as public domain, favorable CC license, or licensed by the originator of the content. And the show is mixed in. This show's topics are going to be for Bible time, demon possession in Mark chapter 5. Oh boy. And then I'm going to talk about the Fonzie's favorites LP record that I've had for years. Um, long story about why I want to talk about that. And then for our archive.org feature, what happened to archive.org? Uh, this month has not been a good month for them. And really, before we go into the rest of the show, I'm going to tell you very quickly what's happened. They have been knocked down by a denial of service attack. And they even were hacked. Their, their website was hacked and user data s- stolen. So... <laughs> It's it's been a month for them. We'll talk about that more at the end of the show. And now it is Bible time. Bible time, we're going to look at Mark chapter 5, verses 1 to 20. And this is the a place where Jesus actually cast demons, and I use the word plural, out of a poor man. So follow along with this story. Again, this is Mark chapter 5, verses 1 to 20. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of Jeremies. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him, and crying out loud with a loud voice, he said, Why have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God not to torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, Send us to the pigs, let us enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs and the herd, numbering about two thousand, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country, and people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had been the legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him they might be with him. And he did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you, and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone marveled. What a bizarre tale. It's like, (laughs) um, but when you look back at it, Jesus was trying to cast demons out of this man, and then actually had dialogue with them, found out there were multiple in this poor man. And then the demons bargain with Jesus. It's like, well, don't just cast us out, throw us into these pigs, which Jews always thought pigs were unclean. And the word unclean is used a bunch in here. 
So Jesus permitted it. <laughs> That's, I mean, stop, go back and look at some of these words in here. Jesus permitted them to enter the pigs, and then the pigs rushed down and drowned in the sea. Now, did that actually hurt the demons or not? Who knows? Um, is it easy enough to get rid of demons by letting them drown in the sea? I don't know. But yeah, th this is originally this was supposed to be like a big Halloween story. This was going to be more of a Halloween themed podcast, but with archive.org's problems, I kept kind of waiting in the month, hoping they get corrected and it just didn't play out. And here we're at the end of the month and I've got to do something different. So, um, but anyway, even as sort of a Halloween story, kind of bring it back. Some people claim that the demon possessed people in the Bible have mental illnesses. Now, you can look at some of them and say, like this one, this was a true, some sort of demon possession, that, that, that evil spirits had taken over this man. Some demon possessions seem a whole lot more like maybe a mental illness, but Jesus healed them either way. And the way I look at it, it doesn't matter what it was. The mere fact that Jesus went to them and healed them is what's important. So even though this, you'll probably catch this a little bit after Halloween, that's okay. It's still a fascinating Jesus story. And I hope you really appreciate it and look for these things, especially when Jesus is having dialogue with maybe an adversary. Why is Jesus saying to them? And like, they beg him. Even the demons knew who Jesus was. They proclaim who he was. Awesome story. And now we'll jump over to something else in a different way awesome. The Fonzie's favorite LP. I was playing around with Microsoft's new artificial, artificially intelligent assistant called Copilot. And it's where you type in things and it types back to you like you're there's a real person there and got to talking about influential music in my life and i realized one of the most influential uh, record albums my parents ever got me i wonder if it was for a birthday it had been 1976 was this record called fonzie's favorites and the cover of it had a big picture of fonzie played by henry winkler from the happy days tv series and Basically, uh, I, I was describing some of the songs on it about side one and side two. And I said, you know, I need to just do this in a podcast. Why am I talking to an artificial intelligence about this? Uh, I'm doing this podcast. So this was a super influential album for me. And I will, we'll get into some of the reasons why. But it's like, it, it was this, um, if you ever watched the, especially the early seasons of Happy Days, they'd always start a scene out with some song from the 50s, be it an actual real song or just a cover that sounded kind of like it. And even the original theme song was a 50s song, and then they replaced it with a 1970s song, the Happy Days theme. So anyway, I'm just going to go through this record album. As far as I can tell, it has never been released on CD, and I've been slowly collecting some of the tracks on it from CD. And when I started doing some like deep research into it just to come up with this podcast, I was like, wow, some of the songs on it are actually kind of pretty rare to find anywhere. But the way I look at it, side one was sort of a rock and roll, happy days kind of sounding side. And then you flipped it over into side two, which when I was younger, like around 1976, I didn't always listen to side two, but it had a lot of doo-wop songs on side two. And... I'd go, oh, I don't like these songs as much as the bouncy rock and roll ones on side one, but if the Fonz from Happy Days thought these were his favorite songs, maybe they stand to be listened to. So <laughs> uh, let's start with side one. Track one is the Happy Days theme. And I guess that would have been like, I think it's the third season theme that they um, cut. So that for like TV show, it lasted less than 60 seconds. Well, this thing they made like a two minute 30 something second song and they kept they cut the song up and they kept repeating the same verse you hear on tv over and over and then the instrumental part they do over and over and you can tell it's just kind of spliced together even at a young age i was like yeah that's been spliced together from what was on the television now there actually was a full happy days single that came out that had like the verses you hear um, in the later seasons in the opening 
then the verse you hear like in the seasons one and two ending titles there's like even a third verse so <laughs> um but it starts off with the happy days theme and then song number two is um charlie brown by the coasters and the song starts out it goes fee fee fa fa fo fo fa <laughs> and um the character charlie it's not charlie brown from peanuts it's a sort of a goofy charlie brown but one of the things he says why is everybody always picking on me and you go through all these things he's up to he sounds like kind of a bad guy awesome bumpy song and then we go to bobby darren the mac the knife uh, guy he does a song called splish splash where the lyrics go something like splish splash i was taking a bath all about saturday night and then turns out there's this party going on he ends up dancing hopefully he puts some clothes on besides just his dancing shoes awesome awesome bobby darren song and as i've gotten older i'm like oh bobby darren had this huge musical career uh this song was just one little piece of it then the everly brothers who actually spent um, some of their high school years right here in knoxville tennessee in east tennessee um, they have this song called bird dog and the bird dog is speaking of this guy who does everything he can to steal the singer's um, baby. It's it's like it, it goes and they, they sing the thing and then one of every brother sings a lyric and the other one in a lower voice goes, he's a dog. <laughs> he's like, a very funny joker. He's a dog. When he jokes my baby, <laughs> it's like, it goes on. It's an awesome song. Um, and then Joe Jones has this song. It's called You Talk Too Much. And as lyrics go, it's like, you talk too much, you worry me to death. You talk so much, you even worry my pet. I mean, that's the kind of, that's sort of a real novelty song. Um, again, these are all like um, just really good bouncy songs. And then the Regents do Barbara Ann, which the Beach Boys did it later on. Uh, but But this one, it's sounds very similar maybe not necessarily the beach boys type of harmony but still beautiful harmony beautiful song it's like great on there and then song number seven is jerry lee lewis great balls of fire and he's like i know everyone's heard that song and that's i guess mean, it's like one of those rock and roll greats and then song number eight is bill haley and the comets rock around the clock which was the season one and two opening theme tunes till they sort of rework the show a little bit for season three so here's the whole song and i remember thinking oh wow it's got more verses than what you hear on television so this one it was actually the whole song then we step into the weird stuff that was recorded in the 70s track nine is from a um, artist named frank linden l-y-n-d-o-n and on this album it's called the fonzarelli fonzarelli slide which was um, fonzie's last name and doing a little bit of research, the original single was named Fonzie Meets Carter Sweat Hogs at the School Dance. And then the B side of that single was a very poorly edited together instrumental of pieces of the music you hear in the front. And so this is a very surreal song where Fonzie, Laverne Shirley, which from 1976 would have been the very late 50s, are at the same place apparently the age they are in the late 50s as the sweat hogs who are definitely from the mid to late 70s from a different sitcom welcome back carter it's like and they're all here in this one, one song it makes no sense it's a bit of a train wreck but when you're like nine or ten years old that was awesome so that, that that's a good song number 10 is a weird weird one too it's from a group called the hayats it's called the fawn song and it was released as a single also in 1976 and it had like a pure instrumental version on the side b of what was on side a and then number 11 is this thing called the impressionist track and that's where you listen to it and you hear a um, henry winkler fonzie impersonator saying all the things fonzie said and if you flip the cover of the album on the back side there's this little oval and in it says the last selection on this album is an impressionist track containing the expressions a hey, cool nerd and of course the expression sit on it then it says listen and learn uses fonzie's favorite phrases perfectly <laughs> and so you hear him doing this over like the instrumental piece of the happy days theme from the star of the record doing that 
And I used to always think to myself, you know, the whole time these other songs were put on this album, that song was playing in the background and Fonzie was there saying all these things that was going on because it sort of just, it doesn't fade up into it. It just starts into it and then it kind of fades off. <clears throat> so that is side one. And you can kind of hear my enthusiasm for it. Now, I, I would listen to this record over and over and over, sometimes on my little monophonic record player, and then I'd take it in to the um, living room. My parents had the big stereo record player, and there I could hear some of these songs in stereo. Not a lot of them were, but some of them were. So then flip it over on the side two. And like I said, this is a slower side. It's this awesome doo-wop music. Um, you could almost say it's a almost like a greatest hits of doo-wop, some of these songs. So um, track one starts off with the dubs. Could this be magic? Okay, if you've never heard the song, go go look it up. The dubs, Could This Be Magic, it's on YouTube, it's on streaming services. It's it's like an awesome, slow doo-wop song. And kind of what, this, this, that actually helped me get into doo-wop. When I was an adult, going through and listening to some of the record albums I used to listen to, like I guess when I was first in college, and I'd put this on, I'd listen to that second side and go, wow, these are really awesome songs. So I actually started appreciating it more later. I didn't just listen to it because I thought, oh, well, if Fonzie says these are his favorites, they must be good songs. I, I listened to them again as a young adult. And I'm like, these are awesome songs. And then like the Flamingos is track number two. I only have eyes for you. It's like, oh boy. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, they, these are like the pillars of doo-wop. And then you've got Lil Anthony and the Imperials tears on my pillow and little Anthony sings the song so high that when I was little that not really looking at I would hear the songs I always thought that was a woman singing it so <laughs> still a great song and then an actual true girl group the Chantels sing maybe which is like a sort of a sad love song and then the elegance have little star where it actually you know the song or the song Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but they actually sing some of the lyrics in this song. And it's just, this, this one's just a really smooth, really easy one to listen to. Track number six by Jimmy Charles is A Million to One. And this one again is sang so high, it almost sounds like a woman. And it's sort of this love song where the, the guy singing and the girl are all told, your relationship's working out is a million to one chance. It's like, and it's, it's sort of heartbreaking, but they have so much hope for the relationship. So, I mean, great, great doo-wop. And then one of the granddaddy songs of doo-wop, The Five Satins, In the Still of the Night. It's like, oh, dear, is that not a good song. Wow. And then, I always thought this was neat because from my parents' um, 45 RPM single collection, they had this actual single um, from the Rays, Silhouettes, which is a it's a sort of an interesting story about a guy goes and thinks he sees his girlfriend silhouette on uh, the shade with another man and freaks out and pounds on the door only to find he's on the wrong block. And so then he goes and finds his girlfriend's house and then they were silhouettes on her shade. So happy ending. Uh, great, awesome song. And then the Skyliners, Since I Don't Have You, oh, Heartbreak or sad doo-wop song. Doo-wop songs are awesome, whether they're happy or sad. That's just one thing I've come to realize. And then, they're from the Cleftones, is Heart and Soul. Now, this is a song any kid who ever has played on the piano too much plays. Well, let me play it for you. It goes something like this. And so then you'd play it, and then up on the um, higher keys, then you would get someone else to sit down, and they'd do like the melody of it, which would go like this. Now, with that together, that's what you think this song would sound like. Well, it's got the lyrics, but it's arranged so weird, <laughs> just so absolutely weird. It, it's... It almost doesn't sound like the same song, but it's kind of hitting the chords. And even the chords I played when I was little, and I think everyone else, are actually not the chords 
as the song is played, they form them a little bit differently. It goes C, A minor, F, G. But when it formed those below C, it didn't just keep moving down the keyboard and then back up. It would kind of form it there. When I started trying to listen to it, thinking, oh, wait a second, I've been playing that wrong the whole time. But I think that's just the way kids, just so they could play it, it was easier to just keep moving your hand and not moving your fingers out of position, just moving your hand to those positions. So, right, uh, you know, song I've heard on this thing since 1976. There it goes. And then we got Lee Dorsey, Yaya. Yeah. <laughs> and something I've been doing every once in a while on Friday nights, a teacher friend of my wife um, has does karaoke over at a place in Oliver Springs, Tennessee on Friday nights. And every once in a while I'll get up and I'll do a song. And I'm like, I just need something simple to do. And I remember this Lee Dorsey, Yaya yeah, yeah song. And the lyrics go, oh, well, I'm. And then he makes sort of this, ah. Sitting here, yah yah, waiting for my yah yah, uh huh. <laughs> and you just you just go through, and you just relax, and just if you've heard the song, you just relax and let it happen. Uh, John Lennon even did a cover of this song, which tells me uh, John Lennon even liked it. Just a real fun song. So this is this is the Happy Days, Fonzie's favorite LP. Now, I was not always the coolest kid in school. In fact, I was very much not the coolest kid in school. And in sixth grade, our or fourth grade, I should say, Mrs. Powell, our teacher, said, we're having a party tomorrow. Why don't everyone bring your favorite record album and we'll put them on a turntable and play them. So what was my favorite in fourth grade at that time? Obviously, it was Fonzie's favorite. So I brought Fonzie's favorites. I brought in one of the cool kids he brought an album in, and it was Kiss, <laughs> one of their albums. And I think we were the only two who brought in them in. No one else brought one in. And so Mrs. Powell goes, okay, who wants the, who brought an album to listen to? I walked up with Fonzie's favorites with Henry Winkler's friendly face in the front, and here's here's the other kid, the cool kid, with his Kiss album with the, the four members of his group with all their face makeup, probably tongue stuck out or something. And Mrs. Powell looked at Henry Winkler's friendly face and looked at Kiss and said, I think we'll listen to Chris's album today. <laughs> we listened to it. It was cool. Everyone was happy and loved it. The one day I was super cool in fourth grade. So It's funny how you look back and remember things like that. But um, I think you can tell from my enthusiasm, uh, I adored the fire out of this album. I still do. I love, and when I hear these songs isolated away from it, I always think back about it, and I always can see Fonzie's face in the uh, on the front of that. So, if you can find a copy of it or just catch these songs somewhere, do so. Definitely worth it. And I promise, November's won't be another music album um, entry in the podcast. So now. We get to move on to what happened to archive.org. On October 8th, 2024, the Internet Archive, what we call archive.org, suffered a cyber attack. And based on some third-party comments, they probably were attacked in September or maybe even earlier when things were actually stolen and then it was used against them. So uh, here's a update from October 17th. Last week, along with a distributed denial of service attack and exposure of patron email addresses and encrypted passwords, the Internet Archive's website, JavaScript, was defaced leading us to bring the site down to access and improve our security. The stored data of the Internet Archive is safe, and we are working on resuming services safely. This new reality requires heightened attention to cybersecurity, and we are responding. We apologize for the impact of these library services being unavailable. That goes on a little bit later in the little post and says, We are taking a cautious, deliberate approach to rebuild and strengthen our defenses. Our priority is ensuring the Internet Archive comes online stronger and more secure. As, li as a library community, we are seeing other cyber attacks, for instance, the British Library, Seattle Public Library, Toronto Public Library, now Calgary Public Library. We hope these attacks are not indicative of a trend. 
and then they tell you where to go for the latest updates. And then I jump forward to um, the 21st and they go on they say in recovering from recent cyber attacks on October 8th the Internet Archive has resumed the Wayback Machine which I've talked about a little bit before which was they got back up on the 13th and archive it which I'm not really sure what that is on October 17th something to go explore and as of the 21st they had begun offering provisional availability of archive.org in a read-only manner features like uploading borrowing reviewing items interlibrary loan and other services services are not yet available and it goes on to say hackers disclosed archive.org email encrypted passwords to a transparency website and also sent emails to patrons by exploiting a third-party help desk system apparently i'm not in that system because i didn't get any emails from them um, and then they say the safety and integrity of the internet archives data and patrons remains our top priorities as the security incident is analyzed and contained by our team we're relaunching services as defenses are strengthened these efforts are focused on reinforcing firewall systems and further protecting the data stores and it goes on it, it says things are coming along and then yesterday on the 28th which means i'm recording this on october 29th they have another update and they list all the services there online and they're hoping to get more up soon but as of right now uploading content to archive.org is not working uh, on purpose it, it, they know it's not working because they are having strengthening some security back when i went to upload september's podcast from third-party sources they were already being hit with a denial of service attacks and um I was having tr I got this like error back saying I was trying to do stuff too fast because things weren't uploading because it kept failing and I was like that's weird and I just waited a while tried again and it worked so even back in September they were having problems so that means I can't upload this podcast to archive.org so for the first time ever one of my uh, Radio Free East Tennessee podcasts are going to premiere on YouTube. Oh boy! And then it's, once archive.org is back up, then I'll upload the beautiful um, FLAC file up there and they'll be there. So it's going to go YouTube. There's not going to be much video associated with it, just the logo of the podcast. But at, eventually it will, will go on archive.org and most people actually listen to mp3 so youtube won't be that much of a downgrade to your listening anyway but i thought i'd let you know that um uh, i you know this is my i was going to do probably something else for the archive.org feature i really wanted to get this out earlier in october it was going to be probably a little bit more halloween themed the only thing that survived that whole idea was the <laughs> um bible time so that's kind of where we are with this but still i mean this is a this is an interesting podcast and it's interesting that these see things going on see how a little small not-for-profit organization gets hit by a cyber attack why why do you attack something like archive.org probably just to say oh i was the one who was able to bring them down with this simple cyber attack Remember, celebrate the small things in life because the large things are few and far between. That way your life will be full of many blessings.